Garrett from the Rogue Raiders FTC 7129, and I'm here with Jonathan, a FTC alum and an engineering student at Valparaiso to talk to you about drivetrains. Yeah, so drivetrains are a really cool topic. It's really the base of your robot, so getting that foundation well laid is a great starting point for the rest of your robot. Okay, well, let's jump into it. What are the primary drivetrains used in FTC? I can think of three main groups. There's your tank drivetrains, which have two sides that move at different speeds to control your movement. You have your holonomic, which can move in all directions. And you have your swerve, which can have individual tank wheels that move to also move in all directions. Okay. Can you go through those and tell how exactly those work and what kinds of wheels those use? Sure. So the first is the tank drive. It usually uses wheels like this with a little bit of a round on them. Uh, they work really well for uh, turning. Common way to use them is with six wheels, three on each side. You vary your speed to turn like a tank and move around. Um, sometimes you also use more grippy wheels like this. They're great for grip, but um, wear out more quickly. I'd recommend not using these ones with holes in them. They're better for collections. And so the next big category is holonomic. So that's kind of a big category for anything that moves sideways. So you can move frontwards, backwards, sideways, and the first way to do that is with Omni wheels. Omni wheels are cool because you can move them forward and backward or side and side. So if you have four of them, you can put them on the, the diagonals of your robot to move sideways or frontward and backward, and your robot really has no preference which way is forward and backward. It's really cool. Then there are mechanum wheels, which can move uh, in the same ways, but you mount them forwards. The rollers are tilted instead of the wheels. The last, uh, the last section is Swerve. Swerve usually uses wheels like this because if you use more grippy wheels, they won't be able to turn without ripping up the mat below them or have, requiring a lot of power. So you usually use more smooth wheels so they can turn well and they allow you to move in any direction to strafe, to move sideways, just like these guys, but uh, they do require a lot more space and complexity and design time. Okay, so what are the different pros and cons of these different drivetrains? So tank is really nice because it's simple, it uh, has a lot of pushing power and acceleration, but it doesn't have a whole lot of maneuverability because it can't move side to side. Because since you can't, uh, move side to side, it'll mean that you'll need to turn your robot more. Your driver usually gets used to it. They're really good at that sort of thing, but just because of the time it takes the robot to turn, it will inherently be a little bit slower around the field than something that can move in all directions. But it's fast, it's easy to build, it has good acceleration, and good pushing power too. What are the pros and cons of a holonomic drivetrain? Holonomic drivetrains are have really good maneuverability and pretty good speed and pushing power. The omni-wheel drivetrain is able to move in any direction, which is great, but it also uh, has no preference which way it goes. That means it can go forward, backwards, straight sideways, or the other sideways, and it can, it doesn't need to turn at all. All, it, all directions are each equally good. The issue is they're also kind of bad. Uh, all directions are kind of equally bad. Um, you don't have a strong direction at all. Uh, Mechanical wheels solve that a bit by having a preferred direction. It prefers to go forward and backward, but it can strafe side and sideways and sideways very well too. So that allows you to do some good things with maneuverability while still having some good forward pushing power. You aren't going to be able to push anything sideways, but you shouldn't need to do that anyway. The advantages of Swerve are, in theory, it should have as good speed as something like the tank drive and the maneuverability of the mechanical drivetrain, but in practicality it takes a while to turn the wheels depending on what sort of motors or servos you use. You can't use super grippy wheels because those will get stuck in the mat and uh, it'll take a little bit of time, so it still has better maneuverability and than the tank in better pushing power than the mechanum, but it sacrifices quite a bit in complexity and build time. 
So it definitely has its drawbacks. Interesting variation on tank that I forgot to mention is the uh, treaded drive train. That might be helpful if you have some steep terrain to get over, some really bumpy terrain, but in most cases, a simple tank drive will get you to your destination better and will have less complexity in turning than something like a than something like a tank drive will. Okay, so to wrap up pros and cons, tank drive, it's simple, has a lot of pushing power fast, and with the treaded variant can get over basically any terrain. Um, holonomic drive trains. They can move very well in any direction, but they sacrifice speed and pushing power to be able to do it, but they're still pretty simple. Swerve drive, it still has good pushing power, good speed, and good maneuverability, but at this point is very complicated to design, takes a lot of time to design, takes a lot of time to build, and doesn't necessarily work, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're wanting something really simple, a tank is a pretty good option, it can go fast, but mechanum drive train isn't that much harder, especially if you have another team to help you uh, along with some of your initial designs and concepts. So I would recommend to try to jump into a mechanum if you can. They're really good maneuverability, really good, pretty good pushing power, uh, pretty good acceleration, and they're just all around a really good drivetrain. I would recommend staying away from Swerve if you can, because even though it does have the highest potential, it also has by far the highest barrier to entry in the design time and the weight and size and strength that it needs to take up. So usually it isn't worth it. If you can pull something off over the summer, have a really good design, have some people passionate about it, it can work, it can be great. But oftentimes that is not the case. So Mechanum is my favorite, but all of them have their various strengths and weaknesses. Thank you so much. This has been really fun. Thank you so much for um, doing this video with me. And thank you all for watching. Until next video, goodbye. Thank you for watching this video on drivetrains and wheels with Jonathan Clay, an engineering student at Valparaiso. This is our first video in our Game On series. And next week, we'll be uploading a video giving you some tips for your rookie year. Stay tuned. Bye.